prank. He blew up a door, actually, uh, playing a prank on one of his uh, roommates. Did you have the other prank he did? I didn't. I'm scared to say I'm scared somebody will try this, but he brought a donkey in the classroom and had the donkey like sitting in the teacher's chair. <laughs> <laughs> After he was expelled from Yale, he went to and enrolled in the United States Navy as a midshipman in 1806. Um, this this event led to some of his writings about war and his tactics, war tactics and all that. Uh, later life, after he got out of the, na the Navy, he married his wife, uh, Susan Augusta de Lacey, or Lancey, in 1811. <clears throat> the reason he began writing was because of a challenge from his wife. She wanted a novel that would inspire her more, more than the one she was actually reading at the time. So, um, in response to that, he wrote the novel Precaution in 1822. <coughs> This is actually the same uh, the same year that The Last of the Mohicans was published. Um, after the success of Precaution, he went on to write the, to begin writing the Leather Stocking Tales, which includes the uh, Last of the Mohicans, a novel called The Deer Slayer, and uh, Pioneers, which is another one that we had the option of reading in the class. Uh, after 60 years of age, Cooper died in September on September 14, 1851. The events that I saw <coughs> they had been out that was most important in his life life is when he went to the Hudson River region and he became acquainted with Indians of Central New York State and seeing the art of wilderness survivor and then he meets a white man that hung with the Indians and they had came to his home and so that based um, his character Hawkey that's what he based his character off of and then Hannah his sister died because of injury by falling off a horse and the capture and murder of Jane McRae by Indians influenced his creation of Cora and Alice whom he presents as delicate and vulnerable. And then um, it revealed, the last of the Mohicans revealed Cooper's preoccupation with the discontinuation of both a way of life and family line. His family fortune was turned into missed uh, fortune, the dynastic legacy that once seemed certain not to be. And the only dominant theme in his life, one which premeditates his novel. Some of the events that occurred during the setting of the novel, which was in 1757, was uh, the French and Indian War was occurring, which is also known as the Seven Years War. And the main focal point that is occurring during the novel is the siege of Fort William Henry. <coughs> uh, Fort William Henry was a fort, it's still there, uh, on the Ostego Lake, also known as Lake George in New York. It's a... Uh, it's upper eastern New York, not far from the Canadian border. <clears throat> Some events that occurred during the writing and publication of the novel, which again was in 1820, America was recovering from the War of 1812. Um, this again leads to a segue into where Cooper picks up some of his ideas. Because the novel is set during a war, and he was a midshipman and in the Navy, this is where he gets some of his ideas about having it occur during the French and Indian War. Another key theme about The Last of the Mohicans is it's a story about the plight of the Indian during this war, and a romance between white people and Indians. And the reason he, he, I believe that he does this is because this is the beginning of the Indian removal process, or also known as the Trail of Tears. So, 
and the reason we did this is because whites wanted the land where these Indians were. That's where our frontier comes from. That's where our new states come from. So we got, uh, they wanted them out so we could have them. <coughs> and that's the reason we have the ideas of removing and, and encroaching on the Indians' land in the novel. These are the countries that were fighting during the French and Indian War. I've broken, broken down, you have Great Britain's people, which was British North America, which is present-day Canada, the United States. The Iroquois Confederacy, which included the Mohicans, or the Mohawk tribe, and also the Cherokee Indians. On the French side, we had the colony of New France, which would be our British colonies. The Why Not Indians, or the Hurons, which is the antagonist in the novel. And you also have the Algonquins and the Suwannee Indians. There are many gender <laughs> roles in the novel. But as you can see, they're basically the same. You have the homemakers and the farmers, or frontier people. Well, they're all, you know, you basically have the same thing going on here. Medical providers and hunters. This, uh, of woman back in this time because they were having a siege if, if you were in that fort you had to do something so what, what they did was provide medical care to the soldiers that were fighting they also had to fight for themselves because um, a lot of the times an Indian any, I mean they would get killed just as well as a man would so the gender role in this novel is basically split even <coughs> the interaction between society. There are many hostile acts that are during the novel because it is based during the French and Indian War. And the novel forces on a relationship between British women and a man who has. There are many different social classes represented in the novel. You have the uh, aristocrats, which is back in this time, which was like the rank of major on up. You had so regular soldiers, uh, basically a peasant type militia man, if, if you can think of that during the Revolutionary War. But you also had the frontier people and the Indians. And, and during this time, they, they were basically the same. Both of them were living off the land which is another key point that Cooper has in his novel, which is getting back to nature, a naturalistic point of view. Kind of like the transcendent transcendentalist, such as uh, Walden Thoreau had. Most often the different social classes are hostile toward each other because an aristocrat didn't want, ha want to have anything to do with the lower peasant. You know, they, they were beneath them. This point right here is the reason that this is American literature. He made the first American hero, the one that uh, when you pick up a book nowadays, that that's the American hero that you think. <clears throat> Who was able to relate to a naturalistic point of view 
you by incorporating many scenes <laughs> which involve man's relationship with nature. Such scenes, for example, are shown in the fact that a central man is the pushing of corn to the man from urban society and the wilds of the city. There have been several media interpretations of this. Um, back in the early 19th century, or 20th century, there was a Broadway play based on this novel. Um, but the most notable adaptation is the uh, 1992 motion picture. I'm sure you've all seen it with Daniel Day Lewis um, as Hawkeye, Madeline Stowe as Cora, and Wes Studi as Magua. This was based on the George Sykes 1936 performance from which the which we get the name. was fighting for his love, just fighting for his principles, and that's what every American really wants to do is have it their way. All right, Cooper seemed to be the first to really care about like the environment and the Native Americans and uh, seemingly women too. What do you think, did y'all see, see any events maybe in his life that would make him kind of this compassionate person with this big perspective that nobody else in his era really came to Living have? in Cooperstown with it being a frontier town, it, that's what made him really think about nature and the people that he surrounded himself with. That's what he grew up as, a frontiersman, so he grew up with nature. Do you think he would care at all that that's like the baseball capital of the world now? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, thank y'all very much. Okay, so um, several announcements. Before Monday, you need to uh, read your assignments on Hawthorne, take your quiz, and write your blog. I'm just going to be straight up with y'all. There are a lot of you that are not reading. 